Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to episode 10 of Bleach. It's Bleach Day! Yay! Pretty excited because we're in the midst of the Kimpachi vs. Kimpachi fight. And I'm like, like a little extra excited because I honestly like, don't remember exactly how the fight goes. I, I do know the outcome, but I don't remember how it went in the manga. I, I, all I remember is like the end is like a montage and then the climax. <laughs> so, um, and I know they didn't explain the bond tie in the manga, so maybe they might ex uh, ex uh, explain it here. Also, something I didn't notice on my uh, first viewing of the episode and in just the reaction video, um, as I said, like I think Unahana is healing him after like giving him a fatal blow. And just like she's just gonna keep doing that and i think that it's like extra right because even though i didn't notice it before um when kenpachi like like re regained consciousness and blocked like he had a sword in his hand while when he got stabbed it got like knocked away so that's probably that probably means like unahan is just healing him i think unless it is some weird um weird thing like denjutsu but not really but uh, i feel like this made some more sense since she's a healer so that's exciting and on the flip side Ichido and Renji are going to the Sampato maker die that that their new stuff I, well Ichido needs a new a whole new sword while Renji I think just upgrades his I forgot what exactly happens with Renji's I think he gets an upgrade to his current sword and obviously Ichido needs to make it from scratch but yeah, that's about it. So we'll probably see the full battle. Um, yeah, the episode's called The Battle. And the poem last episode was just Battle is Everything. Which still, honestly, it's like the 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 poem that stuck with me the most, dude. It, it just hits so hard. Especially since it's the only, like, one-liner one poem. So excited. Excited to see how this, uh, how this turns out. And yeah, let's get started. Uh... I am using the lazy release, finally lazy, not being so lazy, um, which is fun. <laughs> and yeah, at the end of the episode, we'll talk about it. So get your copy of the episode ready. My copy length is 24 minutes, 34 seconds long. And at the end of the episode, well, yeah, I already said that. Uh, did I? At the end of the episode, we'll talk about it. Um, I'm looping. I'm looping. Um, but yeah, let's start in three two one go oh, it's gonna be loud isn't it it's always fucking <laughs> it's sort of like every episode oh it's the same line dude it's always fucking loud <laughs> literally getting manhandled Ooh. Close. Unless this is a Kempachi ability. But I just don't remember that at all, so. I guess it would make sense how he gets stronger every time. Like the natural Zenkai boost. I thought it was just like his attitude. And I'm shaping up, but it could actually be like an innate ability. But it's kind of weird. I don't think so. Like, how would that work in some of the situations? Oh man, it's so nice seeing the the opening subs like this. <laughs> it looks better, the lazy version. Ba. Oh, we might get a talk to Zandatsu this episode. That could be fun. And I'm still waiting for Uryu's uh, confrontation or with uh, Yuabak or whatever. So he can get convinced to join the Quincy's. If they add like, something like that. 
to the end of the mind, I think, like, it's just, like, they just announced that he's joining. Like, we don't see the recruitment process at all. Da -da -da, da -da 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 Honestly, this is definitely the band's best song. And the the special ending. I don't know. Their, their catalog of songs is kind of bit, honestly. Besides this. Preview? Preview? Flashback me. Jesus. It's a lot of bodies. Bleach 10. The battle. Several hundred years ago. <laughs> okay. It's not her. <laughs> it's him as a kid. It's actually insane how much potential this guy has. Yeah, his constant self shattling. So she's removing these self shackles. Both consciously and subconsciously. The maximum minimum. Ah. So he's always looking for an equal battle. So he lowers himself to his opponent. I see. What? I mean, that's just losing just in a fight. kind of crazy you know how she like mastered like what what was it like a thousand styles and <laughs> a kid beating her in like just a straight straight fight Yep, hey, I was right, but I guess it was pretty easy to dice.
Oh, here we go. Oh, now that's now that's gnarly. Oh, heals. So it acts like a liquid weapon. And it heals her wounds when it hits. And maybe she's using her own blood? I don't know. Oof. It's interesting. Whenever I saw, I remember the skeleton thing, but I thought it was her Bontai doing this. <laughs> it's just his feeling of bliss, huh? Just to the couple, couple Kempachis to the trim. So we still didn't get an explanation on our Bankai. I'm guessing it's mainly, I know it's bloody, but I'm, it's like sword into a liquid sort of thing. True. There's some pato.
Ja. Rip, rip. <laughs> that was a cool fight, man. Lots of, like, di thinking, dialogue, inner dialogue. But, still cool. Finally can hear his sword. Hey! It's the Tempachi before him, right? Yay! Clap, clap. Now it's time for you to do stuff. I'm guessing. Yep, well, yeah. Well, probably won't see that this season, but. <laughs> oh, they used ton buff Tonadon as a landing pad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like a fun castle. Maybe they're all out. Uh, Blade God. <laughs> he is vibing hard. Get loose. Got a vibe with him. <laughs> yeah. That's an intense bow. How, how do you even do that? Hello, Mara? What? Why is it so shabby? <laughs> I like Mara's design. She looks cool. All right, I remember they do they like, train in a pit. Huh? Champato? Okay. I was trying to say it, but then I didn't want to say it because I thought uh they wouldn't be able to see the real forms. Hey, broken swords. 
I mean, each of those is worse. Did, uh, yeah, I mean, couldn't he repair, uh, Regita repair this? Oh, not loved? <laughs> Forgot what they fight, the Oh. They're like blanks. Blank. Oh, yeah, nameless, okay. Ah, right. That's what they use. Okay. You're imprinting your essence on them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh. So creepy, though. He's out of here. Not on a barrier. Call someone to pick her up. It's over. <laughs> I mean, this is oh, there has to be an ending train. Yeah, it's four minutes, five minutes left almost. All right. So what's gonna happen next? Obviously, we're gonna see them training with the Zampato, but what's gonna happen with other characters? I don't remember. I don't remember what happens post before the second invasion happens, besides the Ichido stuff, kinda. Maybe Uryu? Uryu? <laughs> Still wanna see him get, like, recruited. Cause they've been adding so much Uryu scenes, you might as well add one actually him getting recruited, right? But I guess, like, even if they don't, him, like, even the last scene he got where he's struggling, like, thinking about how So Reapers fucked them over, but then Thinking about how Ichido was different. Maybe that's good enough, but I don't know. All right, epilogue. Oh, okay, back with the Ichido. 71 hour time slip? Oh, Runji passed. <laughs> wow, well, he couldn't even rip. Repair Ichido's anyways, while well, we could repair Ranji's, technically, right? Oh, uh, nobody wanted him! <laughs> How does he get his back? I know he has, like, a talk inside himself.
Alter. Losing to Renji. This is just hard bait, but I don't remember. Oh, so he could. Yeah, but <laughs> that would never work. Delete it. I guess he never like trained with an Asachi. He just kind of like immediately got his Shitai. Oh, so he's actually out of there and he needs to go back up. I kind of forgot, but I guess it made sense. He eventually needed. <sighs> oh, it's Ichido's mom. Okay, everything but the rain. Right, because they both Ichido and Zen, that's the hate the rain. Cool. Okay. Right, I guess Yeah. <laughs> Alright, that that actually, that does make sense. I just because obviously Ichido does have a have his talk with his dad and learns about his mom and stuff. I just forgot like when that happened. So, so he actually did that yeeted. It wasn't really a bait. He did that yeeted from the Soul Palace. Dude, imagine losing to Renji. No, I'm joking. I mean, it makes a lot of sense too because uh, Ichido did kind of just skip this bid step, right? Like he immediately got his uh, Shitai and then Bankai like really fast while, um, I'm assuming, like, Renji and, like, literally, like, every other Soul Reaper, um, trained with the Atsui, what, the Atsuishi, um, and, like, they, I just got to, like, know it and stuff and, like, slowly imprint its soul onto it, like, over the course of years. I don't exactly know the, I don't want to say, like, hundreds of years, because they're not all that old, so maybe, like, decades decades worth before maybe it turns into a sheet guy maybe maybe not that long it, it probably does depend on like your natural talent but but you should kind of just like um skip that step so so maybe like yeah i don't know i didn't really think about that before though anyways good epi good epi you know i guess we should start first off with uh the kempachi versus Versus, um, Unahana. Um, so, was right about it. Um, maybe it was, like, subconsciously remembering what actually happened, but, yeah. So, she was just killing him and bringing him back to life. That's what I thought was happening. Um, then we, I didn't exactly know her, her, um... Her goal. Obviously, her goal was to make him stronger, but, like, how was this making him stronger? So, it was nice to get, like, an explanation of, uh, I guess the origin of why he, um, holds back so much. Because we knew he subcon- not subconsciously held back, but he's also subconsciously holding back at the same time. Like, that double thing. And basically, she's saying that he experienced, like, such a fun first fight. Um... And just how, like, how it ended, how disappointed he was that uh, Unohana couldn't keep up with him. He's been uh, looking for that same feeling before the disappointment. Meaning that he always... And, you know, he got it. At least through uh, Ichido and 
kind of through Neutera of just making yourself almost like slightly below their level i would say like equal to slightly below um just to get that like rush of almost losing um which made sense like i was actually having a because my co-worker watches bleach too though he's like blind to it well you know i read the manga years ago um and he was like saying uh uh, uh talking about last episode like, isn't it just better to have both Kenpachi and Unahana instead of having one of them die to one of them get stronger? And it's just like this, it's it's more of like, a, yes, technically that made sense, but it's the fact that Kenpachi's potential is so high. Like, it's crazy high. Like, I think the only one higher is, I guess, Ichido, since I guess Kenpachi's like hundreds of years old while Ichido's been like a soul reaper for what like two to three years and he's already like one of the strongest um uh, so technically ichido has more potential i think um plus you don't even get to see when he does his full potential or is his real bankai ah spoilers i, I know hard hard spoilers kind of but they might change it so it's fine um but yeah just think about this like Throughout the show, Kenpachi was definitely one of the top tier captains. I, I would arguably say he probably wasn't the strongest. I mean, he definitely wasn't like the strongest captain, like in the first couple arts. Like maybe, I like, guess even now I would say he's probably like obviously not including Yamamoto. He's like he's definitely always like on the upper tier. Um, like out of thirteen, I would say probably like top five, like consistently, and. And, he, like, he's this strong, and he doesn't know sh shit. Like, not to be mean, but, like, he, he, I guess he's he's good. He's, like, a wild fighter where he mainly uses his instincts, and he doesn't, like, have, like, styles, like, pre, pre uh, like, 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 fighting styles. Like, um, like, Unahana, how she mastered, like, 500 different styles or whatever number they gave uh, last episode. He doesn't know Kido. He doesn't know... How to use his Bankai or Shitai. Like, he's he's doing this with just, like, wild fighting. Like, wild swinging and stuff. While, like, everyone else has their Bankai and stuff. So, just, like, the idea of him getting a Bankai is, like, insanity. Like, if he's on this level. He's on, like... He's on and, like, above some captain... Captains with their Bankai. Like, while he's just, like, doing, like... Like, it's kind of just, he's just kind of, like, shit at fighting. Like, like not to be mean. I, obviously, I, like, his wild stuff is, is obviously effective because he can just easily overpower. And, and he does have, like, really great physical stats. But if you think about his arsenal, it's extremely shallow. And, and like, just with that, he's he's able to, like, I, I would say he's, like, probably, like, stronger than Beatia, like, or, or, like, on this, on a similar level, well, Beatia is, like, a master of keto, you know, got the flash step stuff, got, got the Bankai, like, mastered, it's, like, it's, like, Kenpachi is just, like, a crazy character, so, just, the, like, I, I'm guessing through, like, Shinsuke's mind, like, yes, having both of them really good, if Kenpachi could learn his Shitai and eventually learn his Bankai through this encounter, um, then it, it's definitely it's definitely worth more than having a current Unahana and a current Kempachi, right? Like, like yes, normally it would make sense, but just the potential Kempachi can from actually like learning shit <laughs> and I guess breaking these mental shackles is insanity. And he again he was he was he beat he beat Unahana. He was still using his wild style, but he was he was releasing those shackles, so he was using his full extent of his powers. He beat Unahana with her Bankai. And, I mean, it's true, I guess, that Unahana hasn't fought for a really long time. So maybe she was out of practice, but that's still hella impressive, right? Also, we still didn't... <laughs> I guess this was one of the things, one of the questions, like, what what is Unahana's Bankai? Um, from, like, and to they didn't explain in the manga, I'm guessing from this, it's just the initial, like, easy thing. It turns, it uses her blood and turns the sword into liquid. So it's like, 
So it still has the edge, like if it hits you, it's still it's still like you're getting cut by a sword, but it has like so it's it's like a it moves like a liquid because I did see like Kimpachi pairing it. So I guess if it was technically a liquid, it would like like it wouldn't parry and just hit him. So I guess it's a little nerfed like that, but um, she can move it like a liquid, so it becomes like a all range kind of weapon. At one point, we saw her using like an AOE by just like swinging it around. So it's. I wonder if there's anything deeper to that. I, I I'm guessing there's not, because I'm guessing she was going full power. Um. Yeah. Also, like during the Mondo, since I didn't really remember this fight, I do remember the part where they were like going all skeleton stuff, and I really thought that was like an effect of her Bantai. When he was like saying, "Oh, I'm melting," but no, it was just him, uh, him experiencing a joy of the battle for like, like real joy for the first time in so long. <laughs> Anyways, it was a cool fight. I will say, lots of lots of talking, but like in their minds, <laughs> which, you know, it's fine, but it it was a lot. It was a lot, though. I did appreciate the exposition. But I maybe some people wouldn't. But yeah, it was a, it was a little much. And of course, we got Ichiro and Renji entering the the next castle. I don't even know his name. I'm just gonna call him Blade God. It's, it's so much easier. Definitely a fun character. Kind of forgot. I knew he was, he had a a fun personality, but I kind of forgot its extent. So yeah, you know he he's he's goofy but uh, serious in his own way. The headstand prank was, the bowing like headstand prank was pretty fun. Also, Miru has some nice drip. I do like her character. Also, it was sick when he took like both of their broken swords and just smashed them together. Um, it's also nice learning about that at Atsuhi, at Asachi Asachi. Okay, because I kind of forgot about that lore, but. I mean, we already discussed it. Like, Ichido just skipped this whole process, so. But it's cool. It's cool learning about it. And Ichido, you know, actually getting yeeted. Because it feels like such a big bait. But, no, he actually gets yeeted from the Soul Palace. And, I obviously, I do remember him learning about his mother. Because he kind of needs to. And it, it made sense, right? So I guess he'll he'll do it, but how does he get back to the Soul Palace? I just like the, <laughs> I just will see. Do you like need to go through the Soul Society and just up to the palace, or I wonder if he can get there um, while in Earth? I don't know if there's like a like a hidden hidden elevator thing going on there. But yeah, I mean, interesting. I'm trying to remember what exactly the bad story of Ichido's mom is. Obviously, she's Quincy. I think they. As she meets Ichido's dad while they were fighting Hollows. And I know Ichido's mother does not die from Grand Fisher, and she just dies because, uh, because, um, Yua Bak was like just sucking, sucking some souls up. So it was just, a, it was a, just really horrible timing. So Grand Fisher got that, like, revenge. He got revenge killed when it wasn't even his fault, man. Maybe that's why, uh, Ichido's dad was like, so nonchalant about killing him because he knew about it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, cool, cool, nice poem too. Nice poem, especially with uh the name of the next title. Anything but rain is. It's good. I don't know. It might be might be a pretty emotional uh next time. That's before we do time for some oh, some uh. Voice actors. What should we do? I guess we should do Unohana. Since she, we're never gonna see her again, man. <laughs> Rest in peace. Unless, unless Hellark? Hellark? She's back? What's Hellark starting? I, I, I'm guessing, like, af like, I know the one shot came out a long time ago, and it didn't, and then it just never continued, um... I'm like, oh, so it's not happening. But I guess it is just, uh, he's been helping with the anime, right? So he just didn't continue it. So maybe he'll work on it after. This should be cool. Anyway, I always scroll. Why don't I just, 
una, 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 I don't know, uno, 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 okay, he's a Kawa Aya, and I guess we can do a, oh god, I don't know his name, <laughs> but Gene Squad Zero Die, doesn't it start with an S? Uh, it is alphabetical. What's his name? I I honestly don't even know his name because he kept saying the line and it's long and then he says more stuff. But that's I, I'm just really bad with names in general, so it's not a good uh, it's not a good combination for me. <laughs> oh, is it E? E E E E burn E burn. Uh, okay, no, okay. Concentrate, look at screen. Oh, so I just, oh, actually, never mind. I'm not gonna say, because I might be wrong, so it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Hey, Mira got added. You know what? We'll put Mira in too, maybe. We'll see how long the repertoire is. Oh yeah, the other Tim Potch in the flashback got added too. Uh, oh, there it is. Nimaya Owetsu. Alright, he's Uda Yuji. Kind of a fat repertoire. Born 1971. Old name, Yuji Uda. Excuse me? It's literally his same name he has on the list. Good one. Alright, anything we know? We'll look for some highlight highlight characters. Uh Oh he's spooky! Right, okay, so I did look up this guy before. Yeah, he's from Boogie Pop. And others, 2019. He's he's a villain in one of the arts. One of them. Uh, I just side villains. Spooky electric. So I did look this up in another video. Cool. <laughs> okay, standout role for me, I guess. Zero favorites on my anime list, though. No, no spooky E fans out there? No. I guess there's not a, really a lot of Boogie Pop 2019 fans. Even though I think it's a little underappreciated. Because I kind of like that. Anyways, anything anything else cool that I know? Oh, he's Speedwagon. That's a pretty iconic role. And he's Pazu from Dose in the Shell. Oh, Arise. Okay. We didn't watch Arise on the channel. We watched uh, SAC 2045. But I guess Arise, everyone's younger. So Pazu having a different voice actor made sense. It's kind of funny, though, since we do have Ghost in the Shell content on the channel. He's a frog from Naruto. Drive Knight from One Punch Man. Uh, da, da, da. That's about it. Oh, he's Leif from uh, Vinland Saga. Cool, cool. It's about all I know. Pretty good though. Getting speed waiting in the in the back pocket um is pretty impressive. Alright, next Aya. Aya 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 The Fat One. Holy No <laughs> wait, that sounded weird. I, I meant a fat repertoire of uh of voice acting stuff. I don't really know what she looks like. Wait, where where's Bleach? Oh, okay, so this is Ratsu. Born 1968. No fun facts. Poopy. She stole from Madami Sama? I don't know what that is, but a lot of adaptions of that. <laughs> um. Anything I know? Uh. Oh, he's Ray from Beyblade, original Beyblade, the tiger guy. I vaguely remember that. <laughs> I used to watch that as a 
as a kid back in the day. There's also Amy from Sailor Moon, which is that? Is that uh, yeah, Neptune? <laughs> the Uranus? Uh, uh, IQ of 300? Oh, Mercury. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I, I've not really watched Sailor Moon. 300 IQ. Obviously, she's Ratsu. 300. Wait, that's actually insane. <laughs> Actually insane. She's Kara Burroughs from Cardcaptor Sakura. Uh, she's Balma? Okay, Balma's a, a very iconic role too. And Bra. She voices Balma's child. Yuki from Fruit Basket. I haven't watched Fruit Basket, but lots of favorites. It's, you know, popular anime, so. Probably noteworthy to say. <laughs> Yuri from Preacher. So she's also in Preacher. Okay. Hitting that magical girl stuff here. Eh? I respect it. I feel like if I was gonna watch, uh, I don't know. I was, I was gonna say if I had to watch a Magical Girl anime, maybe Preacher, but maybe it is just Sailor Moon, Crystal, one of the reboot. I don't know if I can watch the old one, but I'm probably never gonna watch either of them. So doesn't matter. She's Yoko from Juni Kukuki. What is this? I don't know, and I never will. <laughs> Hey, she's also in Ghost in the Shell Arise. Su random supporting character. She's also Usiliwood from Korewa Zombie Desuka. Don't know what that is, but lots of favorites. Maho Shoujo, Lyrical, of course, more, more Maho Shoujo stuff. Lot, no, just actually a lot of Maho Shoujo stuff. I respect it. Uh, God, so much. She's been in the game for a while. Again, respectable. Uh... Anything out? Rosario Vampire, Sovereign Character, Ririko, Saint Seiya, Oh. Yeah, that's about Ty oh, Tyru from uh, the OVA of uh, Battleship Yamato. Yeah, I've never watched the original. The OVA, though, is so fucking good. I I never, I haven't watched season 3, though. 20, 2205. She's Tyru, the glasses lady that liked the older brother of the protagonist. Cool. Alright. Cool, let's check out, uh, Tachi Yu, she's Meru, that random girl. <laughs> I don't know why we're checking her out, might as well, I'm, I'm already invested. Uh, Ayami from Azure Lane, the anime. Oh, I'm <laughs> Kenya from Erased. Ooh. Oh, that blonde kid. Right. Okay. Mm. Hero from Fruit Basket. Another Fruit Basketer. 
Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Oh my god, she's Josuke. Oh, she must be, uh... Child Josuke. Oh, I lost it! What the heck? Bring me back. Bring me back. Yeah, let me let me click on Joe Sleepers. Yeah, okay. Child flashback Joe Slay. Oh, I was that surprised and I'm like, no, that must be a kid. The range is <laughs> the range doesn't make sense to me. Um People, people, Who, who's this? Oh, Tanjiro's brother from Demon Slayer. I'm like, looks like the Demon Slayer guy, but what does he have three favorites? It's just his brother, man. Pretty big repertoire, too, though. It's more supporting characters than, uh, than Unahana. Dorothy from Princess Principal. I don't know what that is. Uh, all right, I'm, we're done. Beautiful. Good, good timing. I'm actually like really sleepy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And yeah, next time, uh, uh, bat story time. Ichigo's mom's bat story. Should be fun. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully to see you in SMPs.